You've probably seen these swatches that I did by Richard Schmid's method, which he learned from his instructors. Anyway, um, I learned a lot doing these and I've got labels on everything, but the problem is they've become more like decoration than utilitarian and I need to do something about that. Hello, I am Diane Dobson Barton and welcome to my channel. I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing. You just hit the little subscribe button below and if you wish to be notified when a new video is released, just hit the little bell. If you have any questions or just want to share some information, just feel free to pop it in the comments below. I'm going to do something a little different today. I have seen uh, on other videos, other channels, these swatch booklets that you can purchase. And I'm very intrigued. The, my problem is that, besides words, my problem is that I wanna use what I already have on hand before I go buy something. I will admit, I did order a few things on Amazon the other day. This, I'm filming this on a Thursday and the items are supposed to be here Saturday. So that will probably be, probably be my next video. But my thing is, I want to be able to take my swatches with me or just take them out of a book. I want them all in one place so I'm not having to dig through sketchbooks to try to find swatches because I've been doing them in some of my sketchbooks and it's become a problem when I go to use that medium and my swatches are somewhere in one of my sketchbooks. So I either wind up redoing them or just doing without. The ones I saw on Amazon and the art supply stores were reasonably priced. They were. The thing is, I want to use what I have. So in that spirit, I'm gonna take you to the overhead and show you how I do this. I'm a planner person. I have uh, several different paper punches. I've got the three ring paper punch that you use for the three ring binders. But this is specifically to use with happy planners. I got this, I have to say, I got this on clearance at an area Walmart for like $10 or something. It was crazy. I couldn't pass it up. I've got much more use out of it than that since I bought it. Anyway, so I'm using a paper punch here. I'm, these watercolor pads I've had here and it's nice heavy paper. It's cold press watercolor acid free. There are 12 sheets in each one. And I got these on sale also. And I think I paid like $3 a piece for each of these. I grabbed two of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to punch these. And then if you're familiar with Happy Planners, they have these discs that come with them. And then you can put your own cover or whatever on, on the front of it. I had this one that I was using for some notes on a wonderful course I took, which I need to take again, actually. This was a placemat that I got at like a, a Dollar Tree, Dollar General. I think this was a Dollar Tree. And I cut them down to fit the classic planner size. And I had these notes in there. But you can use whatever you want for the cover. I mean, you can, you know, you can use a three ring binder, you can, you know, use the rings that, um, you know, the individual rings and then that open up and then you can take the pages out. And I, in fact, one of them I saw on Amazon, it was made with those rings like that. And you can make this any size that you want. This just seemed like a convenient size for me because I had these watercolor sheets that were this size. But I'm gonna pull all these out and then I will punch them and I will see you back here in just a few minutes. Just a note, these come with a really nice chipboard 
cover on the back. You could even take this off and punch this. You wouldn't be able to punch it with something like this because it's too thick. But I bet you could take like a leather punch or something to it and make a nice hard cover. And if I do that, I will I'll share that. I do need to say I'm having to punch these one at a time because it is such a heavy paper in this punch and I'm just centering it in these punches so that I don't get like a half a hole punch on the edge or anything like that so they're all full punch and I'm noting where it is on my lettering to get it centered at the same spot each time. You can always put like a little piece of washi or something there to to remind you. And, then, and if you're not familiar with Happy Planner rings, these are just these are just the ones I have. I have a container of them somewhere and I don't know what I did with them. I can't find them. I'm sure sure they'll show up. But you can get all different kinds. You can also go to Staples and they also have um, the disc of their brand that you can use. So it's just whatever you have. And I'm just gonna... One great thing about this is you can take some of these papers and you don't have to use this full size. You can cut it into thirds, you can cut it into, because there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, you know, like I can take three pages of this and, or three, three sections on each page, and then I can just pop them in my plain air materials of whatever case, or whatever supplies I'm taking. and then I'm just going to go through and put these all on there. I'm going to leave some out because I am going to cut them, I think. I can take different kinds of paper. I can, you know, I'm an, I also oil paint, so I could gesso some of these and then, you know, do paint, oil paint swatches, acrylic swatches, whatever it is I need to do. And I'm not limited to what I'm binding here, I can, there's different size rings that you can get. I can make this just as large of a swatch book as I want to. In theory, I could have hundreds of pages or I could have, you know, I could stop right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put all of the papers in here and I will see you when I am done. It seems like if I do two pages at a time, it works well. If I do more than that with this heavy paper, it tends to bend. Let's see. I'm gonna do two of these with half pages and two with three. And I can leave it like this without a cover, or I'm going to put it, put it in here. So I'm going to cut this cover. So I've just got a regular utility knife here. So what I'm going to do, square this up. In fact, I think I'm going to tape this down. Then I'm just going to take my utility knife. This is just a vinyl. Map. You could do this a specific size if you want to, you know, as far as like 8 by 10, whatever you want to do. And then I'm going to take these and I'm going to 
going to take two of them at a time. Then I've got half pages ish. And these I can just pop right out and take with me. One note if you do cut your pages like this, make sure that you know which which is on top, which is up because if you um, if you flip these over or anything, they're not going to fit neatly. And if you're like me, you prefer them to be for them to be neat. I am. I have also decided I'm going to cut. I can't like say cut your cover this size. Do what you. works for you. I'm going to tape this down so it's nice and square. And we'll cut this one the same size. Lining it up on the same mark. And let's see what we got here. That works. So now I've got a swatch book that I can cut pages at 5.5 .5 by 8.5 inches and I know that they'll fit in there and I can swatch to my heart's content. And if you need to do like watercolor, you can always take one of these and just make a black mark, you know, with like a sharpie to test the transparency. I think I am going to first swatch my Neo colors because they were on my desk. And now I've got all my swatches in one place. I hope you found this helpful. Maybe it inspired you to do something of your own. I appreciate you watching. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.